tell us more about what's been making headlines in finance and economic news this week, we are joined by Suzanne Haddon, who is Managing Director of BFG Financial Services. Good morning, uh, Suzanne. Thanks for your time. Good morning. The big financial news here this week was obviously the release of MyEFO. Uh, it came in better than expected, but it's still very large numbers here, a deficit of $200 billion, thanks primarily to that iron ore price and less of a demand for some of those welfare subsidies such as JobKeeper. What does it tell us about the state of the economy? Well, it tells us it's certainly improved since the last budget only 10 weeks ago. But of course, there's still plenty of headwinds because, as you say, though there's less people on JobKeeper, a saving of about $11 billion, that is forecast to end uh, March, end of March next year. Mm. So there could be a somewhat of a cliff that people could be coming off financially. Pleasingly, though, they did uh, allow $850 million for another 10,000 aged care, home care packages for older Australians, because there's quite a waiting list for support in that area. So that brings it to 50,000 50, places for the home care packages, which is great. But concerningly, one of the assumptions in the budget was that we didn't have any state border restrictions. And as you've already highlighted, that sort of gone out the window as of yesterday and today. So that will be worrying for the budget numbers and could really slow down the recovery we're expecting. Yeah, just by how much? Is it possible at all to forecast that, given we don't know exactly where New South Wales is heading with this Avalon uh, cluster and any potential uh, further uh, restrictions? But is there any sort of modelling on how that could impact? Because we know how dire the Melbourne lockdown was for mm -hmm. the national economy. There's obviously feeds into that, those national GDP numbers. So you've um, highlighted the big challenge for the government. In a pandemic, in a coronavirus environment, it is extraordinarily difficult to project what might happen mm -hmm. because you don't know the actual scenario, the most likely scenario with the outbreak. So they'll be watching very closely to see how New South Wales contains this issue and of course be hoping the reaction from the other states don't bring us to our knees mm -hmm. as far as stopping travel. Uh, stopping flow of goods mm. and economic growth. So it will be a big concern. Another thing, interesting take out of my AFO, I thought was, you know, the devil is always in the detail with these things. And it was looking at the iron ore price, which is currently uh, budgeted in at about 150 US dollars. But by the end of the September quarter 2021, uh, the budget uh, is projecting it to go as low as 55 US dollars. Well, the previous budget, and you've highlighted one of the big differences in the positive reduction in our deficit below 200 billion, was that 10 weeks ago, it was forecast to drop off to 55 US dollars, and now it's $150. So mm -hmm. even that forecast may prove to be too conservative, and to a certain extent, let's hope so, because it'll be great for tax receipts mm -hmm. if the iron ore price can stay up. And it appears the demand from China is unabated. And so long as they don't turn around and put some sort of tariff or restrictions on our iron ore, which we consider highly unlikely mm. because they need the iron ore to develop and do their infrastructure spending that mm. they're planning. So we can cross our fingers on that one. Yeah, I guess the question there is just for how long, though. The alternatives to them right now is dirtier uh, iron ore, but who knows what the next couple of years might bring. We're short on time, Suzanne, so I just want to cross off two other topics that are quite interesting, Christmas spending and property. An interesting uh, stat out, retailers are seeing fewer customers, but they're spending more. What are the numbers telling us in the lead up to Christmas? Well, of course, we won't have the official numbers for some time, but it, it appears optimistically that the year spend will be up sort of 2.6%, which is great. Importantly, it appears people are buying local mm. and at least trying to buy Australian, which I would encourage, which would be great for our economy. The issue around retail is that the businesses uh, are at great risk from probably end of March, and we're expecting a lot more insolvencies in the retail sector, because notwithstanding the increased spend, 
There is also been protection for businesses by not having to pay their loans at times, by having rent reductions, and that's going to be an issue when some of those protections, including JobKeeper, come off their books. Mm. So Australians do have more money in their pocket. Our savings rate increased dramatically. Mm. We've got about an average of $12,500 saved. Interesting also, credit card debt is a little bit lower. So, and consumer confidence is booming, which is fantastic. Mm. Well, we'll just wait to see if that continues with this uh, cluster that's going on in, in New South Wales. Just finally on property, we've heard mixed reports throughout the year, but as the year has come to an end, some of those more dire reports have been scaled back somewhat. We haven't seen uh, the property sell-off that many were anticipating. Yeah. What are your thoughts on property for now and going into the, uh, the new year? You mentioned people are saving more. Does that mean that first home buyers have got a little bit more in their back pocket to put money up for their deposits? Well, there's been a massive increase in home loans for first home buyers. It's up some 40, over 40%. Mm. Uh, FOMO is a feeling that's permeating mm. purchases. Let me tell you, I get asked the question regularly how to help first home buyers into the market. The interesting thing is the increasing listings. It's forecast that real estate agents won't have much of a break over the Christmas period, which I'm sure they're happy with because auction rates were booming last week and this weekend as well. Interesting, we'll wait to see in Sydney whether that drops off because of the Northern Beaches COVID issues, so it might slow down. The other point to remember is a Reserve Bank Governor, Philip Lowe, has highlighted it's not surprising that property has recovered in general, particularly in regional areas, because of very low interest rates. But he also pointed out that we're not going to have the population growth in coming years, which we know has supported prices. Mm. So I think we have to be careful of pouring into it what's become a bit of a hot property market and potentially paying too much or more importantly, borrowing too much mm. because it's debt that brings people undone mm. when things change. That's just so enticing now with debt so cheap, isn't it? Um, yes. It's that, it's that conundrum, isn't it? Uh, Suzanne Haddon, great to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. Hope you have a great Christmas and we'll look forward to speaking to you in the new year. You too. Thank you.